This will be a shorter video on how to know what key you're in. As everything music related, the principles are simple, but in the application it gets a bit more complicated and because pieces modulate, you can't always rely on the key signature. Of course, if you have no sharps and no flats at all, you're probably in C major or maybe an A minor. We'll talk about that in a second. If you have sharps as your key signature, the last sharp is the leading tone. And as some of you may know, the leading tone is always a half step below the tonic. So if you just take this last sharpened note and you add a half step to it, you'll get to the tonic. If you have two sharps, you take the last sharp, which is C sharp, add a half step to it, and you get to D. If you have five sharps, you take the last sharp, which is A sharp, and you add a half step to it and get to B. If you have flats as your key signature, then the penultimate flat is your tonic directly. No need to add or remove anything here. So the only key where this trick is seemingly not going to work is if you have only one flat, which is the key of F. So actually the trick still kind of works in a twisted way because if your last flat is B flat, then your penultimate flat, uh, if you look at the order of the flat, you're gonna have to loop back to F. So it kind of works, but in a shady way. You can also just remember by heart that F is a key with only one flat. If you're one of those lazy musicians who have always procrastinated learning the order of sharps and flats, uh, now is your moment. So you need to be able to swiftly move in fifths in your mind. So if you take F and you move up in fifths, you're gonna get the order of the sharps. If you take B and go down in fifths, you're gonna get the order of the flats. One is the reverse of the other. Meaning that if you have a piece with only three flats, it's always going to be B, E, and A. If you have a piece with four sharps, it's always going to be F, C, G, and D. Except if you're in a weird mode, uh, which doesn't follow the rules of the tonal system. Now, what these two tricks give you is the major key. So each major key has a minor relative, which is three half steps below. So when you have three sharps in a piece of music, um, you might be in A major but then you also might be an F sharp minor. So then how do you know which one? So what most teachers teach on that front is have a look at the end of the piece, in particular the bass note at the end of the piece, and the bass note is gonna tell you in which key you are. So if it's A, you're in A major. If it's F sharp, you're in F sharp minor. And while this is not false, I think it's kind of a bad advice in general because first of all, if you have a 12 page piece, do you really wanna to have to go all the way to the end um, just to figure out in what key you are in the first few measures. And then also some pieces just modulate. Uh, like for instance, this um, very famous Bach prelude in C minor just starts in C minor, ends in G, in G minor, and actually it ends in G major because it sails of Picardy. But if you try to play the beginning of the piece, like you're in G major or even G minor, you're gonna run into problems. And most importantly, you just wanna be able to look at a music phrase and know which key you're in, not have to look at some other piece of information at the end to figure out, it, you know, it doesn't make sense. So then how do you differentiate between major and minor um, without looking at the end? Well, if you're playing classical repertoire, uh, composers used to be real fans of the harmonic minor mode. Um, so if you have no sharps and flats in the key signature, um, and you're wandering between C and A minor, and you see a bunch of G sharps everywhere, uh, then you're probably in A minor. If you see that all Gs are natural, then you're most probably in C major. But I have to say, uh, in today's music, in today's neoclassical music, most of the time people use the natural minor mode, which has exactly the same notes as the major scale. This means that the major and minor poles are very fluid, and sometimes we're just in both at the same time, and there's no point saying okay we're in major or minor we're just like kind of in this you know tonality but again this idea of looking for the g sharp uh is still a superficial way of finding the tonality the non-superficial way of distinguishing between major and minor is to look at which key the composer is establishing at the beginning of the composition what i mean by that is where is the first resting point in the music this resting point or cadence often takes the form of a 5-1 chord progression so if your key is four flats, so you're wandering between A flat major and F minor, just look for dominant chords. And if you see an E flat seven chord going to an A flat chord, then you're most probably in A flat. Versus if you see a C seven chord uh, going to F minor, um, you're most probably in F minor. So now you know the general key of the piece that you're in. Um, but if you really want to benefit from all the associations that you have, 
for every key. You should be constantly asking yourself in what key you are um, because pieces constantly modulate. And if you know in what key you are, you're literally going to be offloading like 50% of the calculations to your subconscious who will rule out so many impossible options um, in that key or predict patterns that are uh, often seen in that in that key. And if you're playing jazz, well then knowing in what key you're in is vital for improvisation. So my general point is don't just look at the end to find the key. Try to figure out from uh, dominant chords or cadences in what key you're in all the time. Because anyways, you should be looking for cadences all the time to find out about modulations. So we'll have a look at how my heart sings for examples of these modulations. So no sharps and no flats. So we should be starting with the hypothesis of C major or A minor. And what's interesting about this piece is actually it starts on E minor and the first note of the melody is F sharp. So it kind of sends a false signal of maybe being in G major or E minor. But actually, if you apply my method and you look for dominant chords, the first cadence or 5-1 pattern is going to be G7 followed by C. Um, so you can see that we're in C major. Then in the second line, you should notice the presence of the G sharp and most importantly, the E7 chord going to an A minor chord, which suggests that temporarily we're sort of polarizing the minor side of the tonality. So we're kind of moving to A minor for a second. Then the fourth line modulates in a completely different key and you can kind of feel it. Um, everything becomes much more bright uh, and that's because there's plenty of sharps in the melody. And so, okay, we should be looking for dominant chords again. Um, and the last chord of the line is a B7 chord. And so that suggests a tonality of E and because of all those sharps and the E major seven, chord that's the beginning of the line, it's definitely not E minor, it's definitely E major. Then in the fifth line, and this is the reason why I chose this example, uh, we have an instance where you have to look a little bit deeper to find the key, because we hear there's a modulation, um, but there's no dominant chords. Um, so actually here, there is still a cadence. The cadence is a 4-1 pattern instead of being a 5-1 pattern. And uh, when you see this, you can realize that you're actually in A major. The same thing is true of Sati um, in his first Gymnopédie. Uh, you just have 4 1 4 1 in the beginning. That is uh, totally sufficient to install the key of D. So if there's no dominant chord, try to find a 4 1 pattern. It's also a cadence, it's a plagal cadence instead of being a perfect cadence. When we hear the motive being repeated uh, one tone lower on the next line, we can deduce that we're in G major. Um, still, there's no perfect cadence, there's no 5-1, but there's a 4-1 motion or plago cadence. At the last minute, there's a B7 flat 9 chord, which hints at E minor, and indeed it loops back to E minor. But like I said, it's kind of a false signal, because right after that we're modulating back to C. But this is a very fluid piece. It's never resting for too long in one tonality. Most pieces uh, are not going to be modulating that often. So I'll probably be doing a video later on on modulations uh, in and of themselves, how to modulate, what are the different ways in which you can bring about a modulation. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little review on key signatures. If you enjoy my content and want to support it, please consider leaving a super thanks in the comment or uh, checking my Patreon page. That would be really appreciated. And thank you very much. Go find some key signatures.